Well, this is a bit terrifying. You won't believe your eyes when you're here. This is an African elephant close to the roadside. Sorry if it's bad image quality, but I'm not a professional wildlife filmer. At least my setup is for butterflies, not for elephants. And I'm also scared to come very close because this animal, if it has a bad day, it can wipe me out in a second. But wow, is that not amazingly impressive. Hello everyone, this is Bart Coppens and today I am looking for butterflies and maybe some other wildlife in the Ugandan savanna. Can you believe I make it there? Here behind me I already found a bush that's flowering. It's not a native, spe native species, it's a lantana. Nonetheless, the butterflies seem to love it, so let's take some close-ups. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, this one is beautiful. This may be one of my favorite butterflies so far. It's a period butterfly. And the periods seem to dominate the landscape here for some reason. They are the main species of butterflies that I'm seeing here this trip. Oh, it was just chased away by another one. Another thing that you may see, you see here on the savanna are Archaea species. Archaea species are extremely plentiful here. Diverse and come in an enormous amount of shapes, colors and sizes. They are certainly enjoying the wildflowers here on the roadside. Wow. So my observation so far is there's absolutely exquisite, beautiful Pyridae butterflies with a touch of Nymphalidae. Sometimes I see a hair streak. Interestingly, I don't see any Papillionids. There seem to be zero swallowtails so far and pretty much zero skippers. So some species are really absent. And you may be wondering, Bart, is there a risk of you encountering stuff like lions? or elephants here while you're walking here? The answer is yes. You have to be really careful. In this place there are big mammals, elephants, lions, buffaloes, anything, warthogs. The good news is the chance of encountering them is very small but it's there so we have to be, we have to be really careful here. I like to be on the road. Guys, remember what I said about being careful. This is the point where we have to start being careful. Because I think behind this bush, there's a bunch of hippos. And hippos can be very dangerous. Thankfully, they seem to be in the water. But, tread lightly. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Look here into this pool and tell me what you're seeing. Do you see what I see? Guys, we have to be really, really careful. So these are hippopotamuses. Hippopotamuses, I don't even know how to pronounce that in English. <laughs> Whew. It's amazingly impressive to see them this close in the wild. Wow, I'm almost shaking, but I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit scary. I've heard that if they're in a bad mood, they can charge people. Thankfully, it's said that they are more aggressive in the water than they are on land. So uh, let's hope they don't... Let's hope I don't go in water or that they don't go on land and then we can mind each other's business if we keep distance. But wow, that's incredible. Yeah, I can see they are watching us. <laughs> One is playing in the water. That's so crazy. Wow. 
All right. All right, so people here on the roadside, there's a lot of these tiny little flowers and it's attracting a lot of butterflies. Unfortunately, I cannot go off road even though I would like to because there's a lot of big mammals in this area, so you have to be careful. But let me show you some of the butterflies here. I don't know if you guys on YouTube can fully appreciate it, but there's clouds and clouds of tiny little butterflies behind me. Most of them are white, yellow or orange or some variety of that. Very interesting. Just look at the amount of butterflies here on the roadside. It's insane. If we zoom in, can you see how many there are? Man, these must be hundreds of butterflies. Oh my gosh. I'm sure you can see it here in the distance. It's like somebody is throwing confetti. They're just zooming and flying. I'm so happy right now. This is one of my happiest moments this year. I'm so happy. Nothing makes me more happy than seeing stuff like this. Wow. I wish every part on earth looked like this, to be honest. So many butterflies. Wow. Look at it. very fast so it's hard to get a close-up of them they don't stay on the flowers for long lovely little colotus pieces there's many colotus in this landscape they usually have colorful wingtips filming savannah butterflies is very hard maybe it's because of the heat but they rarely ever sit still instead they appear to be constantly in motion quickly hopping from flower to flower I did my best to make some close-ups hard to film. It's hopping from flower to flower and the camera is not cooperating. Oh, quick little close-up, quick enjoy it before it flies away. Very beautiful. In action, the crimson speckled flunky, Utatisa pulchella, or I should say pulchella, that's the Latin pronunciation. It's a day flying tiger moth. It can be rather common here in Africa, in Uganda. They're toxic, so have a very fancy color pattern. And they can be seen going from flower to flower. Seems to be a very common species here in the national parks of Uganda, at least on the savannah. I know the caterpillars eat Heliotropum, or relatives of that family. And it makes them toxic. Hence the pretty colors that advertise, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. Wow. I mean, they're still less impressive than butterflies, of course. Haha. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a butterfly and moth guy. I could run into a lion, but rare butterflies still excite me more than that. But it's very great to see these animals in the wild. And to see that there are still places left on Earth where such environments are preserved and where these animals are welcome. It's great to see them in a place where they are not in zoos, you know. They are thriving here in the wild. And let's hope they will for a long time. Down the road, in the roadside, I also see many butterflies. I am really tempted to wander into the bushes here and explore. Because not all the butterflies are on the roadside. Some are like more into the savannah. But, of course, I cannot wander in here without being in danger, so we have to stick to the road. Look at the large volumes of butterflies flying around here. It's hard to truly capture it. Ah, there we are. These should be African monarchs, also known as African tigers, Danaus chrysippus. It seems to be very common in the savannas of Uganda.
Well guys, being in this landscape, it really is a dream come true. I'd like to thank everybody who's watching my channel, who is following my videos and sharing them. And of, the, of course, the people who have been supporting you. It's because of all of you that I can now sometimes afford to travel, go to the other side of the world to film the insects there. It's a very niche thing and I'm one of the only YouTubers who is doing this. I'm certainly the biggest at this point, but it's still very hard to pull it off. Things like lions are very popular, sharks, snakes. But making a channel about butterflies and moths is difficult, it's so niche. There are so very little people interested in watching. So it's always a struggle to come up with things to entertain people, but this... Oh man, this is... It's a pinnacle so far. It's such a beautiful and interesting landscape. Wow, wait! Zebras? That's right. The only zebra species in Uganda is called the Plains Zebra, also known as the Common Zebra. Did you know that a zebra's stripes are like human fingerprints, in the sense that every zebra has a unique stripe pattern? They don't just eat grass, but also trees and other vegetation, and are commonly found in medium to large herds. We do have to be careful guys, this park is not a zoo. All the animals here are wild. There is no barrier between me and them. Now ladies and gentlemen, another thing you can encounter here is the zebras. And in case you're wondering, no, there is no barrier between me and the animals. These are wild zebras. I don't know if you can see them. Let me show you them. Perhaps with a little bit of close-up. So, as I've said, all the animals that you see in this video are wild. They are just wandering around here. There is no barrier, no gate, nothing preventing these animals from getting here if they wanted to. Look at that, what an experience, isn't it? Yes, visit Uganda. That's... Yeah. And maybe you guys appreciate seeing some of these wild animals. Usually I film butterflies, but you know what? Exceptions can be made. And this video is gonna be one of the exceptions. Think about all the animals that we've already seen. Yeah. Wild zebras, people. They're not even that afraid. I'm surprised. Ladies and gentlemen, there's an elephant crossing the road. I'm not gonna come too close, I'm gonna take my distance. I may try to film it for you, but it's not gonna be good quality footage because I'm a bit scared of these things. Elephants are not super dangerous, but you don't wanna bother them. Well, this is a bit terrifying. You won't believe your eyes when you're here. This is an African elephant close to the roadside. Sorry if it's bad image quality, but I'm not a professional wildlife filmer. At least my setup is for butterflies, not for elephants. And I'm also scared to come very close because this animal, if it has a bad day, it can wipe me out in a second. But wow, is that not amazingly impressive. So here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very close to an African elephant. Look at it. It's so strange to see them this close.
Wow. Do I know? I never thought that posting moth videos online would result in me coming face to face with the largest mammal on land. It's beautiful yet terrifying. Yes folks, this is what appears to be an old male. Or in other terms, a bull. It's said that the young males live in herds, together with the females. And male elephants spend their formative years with the herd, but they leave around age 13 to 14 when puberty sets in. And then the male elephant will either roam the savanna alone or team up with other males in a loose bachelor herd to have a semblance of a social life. Around the age of 30, males will begin breeding with females and will temporarily rejoin the herds when they are looking for a mate. Older males tend to be more solitary. Sometimes here on the roadsides there's very cute little flowers. They may not look like much, but they are a butterfly magnet. This one is hard to identify. It is from the genus Anctene. But there's about 150 species in this genus. Anctene amara, the black striped hair tail, is the closest match I could find. After reading many books and guides, I came to the conclusion that it could be Anctene amara. The habitat consists of savanna, and occasionally open areas in forest zones. And the host plant seems to be Acacia. Well, that makes total sense. Acacia is one of the only and major species of trees widespread in the savanna environment. Reportedly, the caterpillars are also associated with ants. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy because in these bushes, in the little flowers, there is a gorgeous species of African hair streak butterfly. Please let me show you. This is pretty exclusive stuff. A very, very unique savanna butterfly. You don't get this type of content from any other YouTube channel. This appears to be Axiocaracus joana, the Eastern Scarlet. Just like the butterfly I showed before this one, it's also a savanna species that uses acacia as a host plant. It would not surprise me if half of the butterfly species in this environment use acacia as a house plant to be honest. Just like the previous species, their caterpillars are also associated with ants. Interesting. Maybe one of the prettiest species that I have seen today. They are orange with brilliant metallic spots that look like gemstones. These little roadside flowers, which I have not yet identified, seem to be usually important to local butterflies. In the savanna, there are many plants, but not many of them seem to be flowering. At least not while I was there.
perhaps in a different season. But this particular species of flower, that I saw many times along the roadside, supported the local species of butterflies very much. And in fact, if you skip in the, around in this video, you will notice that virtually all the species of butterflies that I have filmed today visited this species of flower. Well, this is an epic fail. I didn't bother to identify this one because I kind of ruined the shot, so it wasn't worth it. But if you know the species, do leave a comment. I was angry that I focused my camera in the wrong place, so I didn't bother, but perhaps my fans can compensate for my laziness here. Now if you can see it people, but here goes a warthog. Oh that I guess you don't believe it. Yes I'm really here. Warthog disappeared into the grass. They tend to be quite shy. It's crazy how many large mammals you can see here in a short time. This pretty bird was hit by a car. And it's probably because there is a piece of corn here that fell down and the birds they come here to eat the corn and get hit by cars. So let's move it to the side of the road so they don't get hit. Well these water bugs seem to have a disagreement gentlemen, as long as they don't charge me I guess. Oh, be careful. This is one of the most dangerous mammals in Africa, believe it or not. Buffaloes are very protective and territorial, and when threatened they are known to charge. They appear to be very social and typically live in large herds. They do have predators, in particular lions. But they are typically not afraid to fight back or charge anything they see as a threat. So be careful boys and girls. I'm amazed at how many large mammal species I can see in this part of the world in just a very short time. The thing, folks, is that the sun is going down, it's getting late. That means we're almost at the end of this video. When the sun goes down, butterfly activity starts to go down. Don't mind the ugly sounds of cars on the background. There's a lot of cars driving around here, you know, tourist vehicles, SUVs, people taking pictures, just like me, I'm the tourist does suppress the sounds of nature a little. However, I am slowly going to go back to my safari camp because when the sun goes down it becomes dangerous here. The lions come out during sundown, especially in the twilight. I like lions, but I wouldn't like to encounter them face to face, so we have to be careful in going back. I see one there, yeah? The butterflies stop flying late in the evening, but there are a few species that are still active. And one of them are the relatives of monarch butterflies. That's right. Let's see if I can catch one of them. Of course, I do not harm them. This is a protected wildlife reserve. I release everything back to nature. Let me show you. Let's 
see, let's see. Come here. Come here, baby. Got it. Appreciate a striking similarity to the monarch butterflies. These are a direct relative in Africa. Fascinating. I've always wanted to see these in the wild too, but it's very hard to film them because they are constantly on the move. This seems to be an old tattered one though. Now don't worry guys, handling it like this does not hurt the butterfly. I know exactly how to handle them. I've handled hundreds of butterflies in my life. I do this for a living. I'm wondering why there's cars and noises in the background. This is why. Like that. Now sometimes on YouTube I get hippie comments saying Well Bart, stop touching the butterflies, you're hurting them Wah wah wah, you're stressing them Wah 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 Well here's the thing I think there is a lot of educational value in making close-ups of the butterflies Especially if we are very gentle with them and do not harm them I know how to handle them without hurting them And all of them are released back into nature Just like this one It doesn't realize it's free, oh it's gone, it's flying away Ciao, see there's the proof, I released them. Beautiful, very striking, very fascinating. In remote wilderness, you would expect that there's nothing but animals and nature, but that's not true. There's constant traffic. Hello. It's really noticeable how these butterflies start flying in the evening. Maybe they are some of the last butterflies to be active in the when the sun is going down. But now on the roadside it's possible to see many of them. They seem to use the road kind of as a trail. They kind of follow it. Sunset is really bringing out their orange color very nicely though. I love it. It's beautiful. Wow, it's a magical moment. I know it's not a monarch butterfly, but monarchs and their relatives are a very fascinating group of butterflies. I should do a special video about them someday. I would really like to go to Mexico and to the place where they hibernate to make a video sometime. Well, that's something for another day. Another individual. I know I've already shown you this pieces once, but this is just to show some variation and drive the point home of what they look like. They're quite fast, sometimes tricky to catch. Huh. Really cool sunset species here. Oh, I should be heading back. You sure don't want to see any lions? Here is very nice. 
And then I went back to my safari camp. I want to show it to you because they generously let me stay there for free. If only in return I give them a little bit of promotion. And man, I am totally willing to promote the place where I stayed at because it was extremely luxurious and beautiful. But not before we encountered wild lions. Thankfully this time I was inside of the car. Here kitty kitty. Honestly, if one of them eats me, the lion would die from too high cholesterol. Wow, what an experience. Just enjoy some of the shots of the lions. Yes, these are wild lions. Alright, let's go back to my safari camp for real this time. see the brown shapes but I can't yeah, be on that. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are back at the camp. Thank you so much for watching and maybe I can show you a little bit about the camp that we're staying right now. Okay wait, let's, let's stand somewhere where you can see the logo, yeah? Alright everyone, thanks for watching. So this video was made at the Kasenyi Safari Camp. I hope I pronounced it well. She can In pronounce it. This, <laughs> <laughs> she can pronounce it better than I do. And I'll show you the environment here. It's absolutely beautiful. And if you're interested in visiting, you can visit us too. Thank you. Cousin Safari Camp. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be honest, this was one of the most beautiful and luxurious places where I have stayed in my entire freaking life. I'm not even kidding. And I'm very honored by the fact that they let us stay here. The view is amazing and is one of the most well-developed, comfortable and luxury places I have seen in the country of Uganda. I highly, highly, highly recommend visiting it if you want to see real safari wildlife. And I haven't even shown you my room yet. And this is certainly more luxury more sophisticated and civilized than is warranted for a giant jungle ape like me, Bart Coppens. <laughs> no, but seriously guys, look at this place. I'm only sending positive vibes. And last but not least, you should see the balcony because that's one of the best features. I hope I left it unlocked. Oops. I should open it with the key. All right, folks, maybe this should work. But Cop is putting a key in the hole. That's the content you want, the content you subscribed and donated for. Ooh, that's closing out my keyhole. Anyway, there you go. This is what I wanted to show you, because the view from here, ho, ho, ho. That's right. This is right from the back of my hut, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. This is the African savanna in Uganda. Now folks, one of the things that makes this place really special is the view. 
I'm currently standing in the bar and dining area. And here in the back is a giant salt lake or a crater lake. Sometimes wounded animals come in there to heal themselves using the salt water. Let me show you around here. Look at the view ladies and gentlemen. Is that not magnificent? In the back you'll see the huts of the safari camp. Wow. They have a website too. If you want to book this place, please do check it out. Kaseni Safari Lodge is the place to be if you want to see real wilderness and real savanna. They have a bar too and most modern facilities. I am not getting paid to promote this by the way. It's not a paid promotion but a genuine recommendation. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I have a lot of videos about insects coming up and you do not want to miss them because this year I am working with some really rare and unusual species. See you in my next upload. Hey. Maybe you're insulting it in its language, you don't know. Yeah, maybe calling it a faggot. My thing, yeah, I don't want to know it's coming to attack you. Mm. Don't piss you yourself, Tom. You started. <laughs> it's flapping its ears, it means it's gonna come and get you. No, it makes us happy. Well, that's a nice view, isn't it, people? Imagine the things that are out there. Imagine the moths in particular.